uh, I initially was like, oh, well, you handled it last week. We may not touch on it this week. But I've still seen people this week post, like, we stand with Israel right. and with that star of leg that they got on that flag. Right. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll touch on that a little bit as well. But, um, but yeah, man, uh, if you align yourself with that state of Israel over there, you're aligning yourself with evil. You're aligning yourself with the devil. Um, and like I said, it's it's represented on their flag. That star is not biblical. And when it is talking about that star in the Bible, it's talking about how it's pagan, how it's wicked. God never commanded to use that star as a as a. Uh, it's not the star of David. That's what people say. The shield of David. That's not that's not what it is. All right, that's a uh, foolishness. Um. But I want to start with Revelation 2 and 9. We'll start there, uh, and then we'll go from there. we got some other places to jump to. So, uh, yeah, start that with Revelation 2 and 9. I know that you uh, read it last week, but we'll, we'll start there this week. All right. All right. Hang on one second. Let me uh, write this down real quick. All right. So, But yeah, also this week I've seen how uh, since Israel started their bombing campaign of Gaza, because you know they took all the uh, all the Palestinians that were living up in you know Western Israel, you know west of the Jordan, they took all of them, and over the past not even a hundred years yet, it's been like eighty years. Over the past eighty years, they have forced them down. They forced all of them down into Gaza. That's what they've been doing. Who they? They've been over there. The uh, uh, the Palestinians. Now, of course, some of them is going to be Israel because Israel is everywhere. Right. But in, they, they, all people that's not white, right. they're forcing them down there from... So obviously, you know, a lot of that's Ishmael, and Hamas is definitely Ishmael. But they, all the people who's not white, whether it be black or brown people, whatever, they're taking them from the west of Israel right. and forcing them down into Gaza. Exactly, bro. And did you see, like, uh, after that, that first initial attack, like, bro, they, they've just been bombing them nonstop. Yeah. Like, dude, the response was like, like, bro, you know, on the cartoons, like, where you, like, throw a, or throw a spitball at them and they hold a big bazooka at you? Oh, yeah. Like, bro, that would be a good analogy. Like, bro, how they – like, bro, you should see they, they've leveled cities. It's insane. Oh, I know. I know. Um, They told – this is what IDF put out after that uh, Hamas attack at a music festival killed like 260 people, right? Right. With their, their with Hamas's rinky dink homemade like you know rockets that they patched together with Scotch tape and versus Israel, the state of Israel that literally has nukes. They have hidden nukes that they don't disclose to the public, but they have. <coughs> excuse me. They literally have nukes. So it's it's it's. Quite literally, like a, a, a like a fertilizer bomb versus a nuke, right? That that's that's what that's what's going on over there. And they they put out a a, a statement after that attack. They said uh, a million people need to evacuate Gaza because we're just gonna bomb everything. That's that's literally what they said. One point one million people need to evacuate. That's what they that's what they told Gaza. They said. Look, we're about to bomb the hell out of you. You ain't got right. nowhere to go. Exactly. That million people, you ain't got nowhere to go but get out of there because we're about to bomb everything. Right. We're fixing the level. It. Yes. And, and the death toll is now up to over 4,000 right. in Gaza. Right. So it, it's the 260 that was at the music festival versus 4,000 that they've killed now. Right. And brother, so, like it was. They was running around beheading babies and all this kind of crap, bro. Yeah, like Prop the propaganda. They put that out to then, therefore, respond to Gaza was like laughable at best to begin with, and then, bro, the evil behind it. Yeah, and obviously, uh, Western media, that is, you know, the U.S. and Britain, are, are, are anytime that somebody's like, 
uh, saying what the state of Israel is doing is evil and wicked. Right. Then they're saying, oh, so you support the, the killing of children? Is that, right. is that it? They're exactly. just, the way they're framing it is so ridiculous. It's laughable. Exactly. Like, like exactly what you said. Like, that has nothing to do with the two. You see right. what I'm saying? Or like, uh, do you support the beheading of babies? That's what you're saying? Yeah. Do you want to behead babies right now? That's what they say. So, you, you'll bring up something like Israel, the state of Israel has bombed 20 hospitals. Right. And they're like, oh, so you support Hamas? Like, no, what, what, are, we, what are we even right. saying here? Exactly. It's like you're just pointing out the facts, shining a light on one side's activities. But yeah, that's their response. That's how you know it's wickedness behind it. Absolutely, absolutely. And as I was saying before, when my mic was muted, it's evil on both sides. Right. Neither of these people are supposed to be in the land, as you was pointing right. out last week. Right. It just that the Arabs, yeah, bro. It's just that the Arabs took the land before the uh, Israelis took the land. The right. Jewish people. The it's people like, who say they are Jews and are not. Are not. It's like we've been fighting. The real Israelites were fa uh, fighting the Palestines before the Israeli yes. pretenders came in and, you know, picked up the sword. And that's why they've still been fighting. Because they're like, you definitely don't, don't uh, you know, deserve that land and shouldn't be here. So we're exactly. definitely. It's, it's similar to the situation of whenever uh, Esau colonized Africa, where before Esau got there, it was uh, Jacob versus Canaan fighting each right. other in Africa. Right. And then Esau got there, and then Jacob and Canaan were labeled as one because they were both black. Mm -hmm. And it's the same with Israel and the Palest the Israelites and the Palestinians that were there before the Israelis got there. They were fighting each other, but now since they're both brown or black, uh, the Israelis consider them the same and just force them all into Gaza. Right. The way they want them out. If they're dark skinned, they do not want them around they Israel. Exactly. And people, uh, people all the time, and it. it, it it, it makes sense if you uh, look at the track record. The the uh, the criticizers of the state of Israel call it an apartheid state, and that's because it is. It's similar to the Jim Crow. It's similar to the apartheid. It's similar to what the Australians do to the Aborigines. It's similar to what you see Esau doing all around the world. Right. But uh, yeah, read that Revelation two nine. All right, the Book of Revelation chapter two and verse nine. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty. But thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Right, so Christ said, I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not. Look at the world today. Who says they are Jews? The so-called Jewish people, the Israelis, the exactly. ones who took the land starting in 1948 and have continued to take the land up until the, uh, today. Um, right. They are Satan. They are the devil. If you say you stand with the state of Israel with that star of Molet, you're condemning yourself. Right. All right. Absolutely. Jump over, yeah, jump over to Revelation 3 and 9 because Christ said, I know your tribulation. He's speaking to the real Jews. He said, I know your tribulation. Right. And poverty because that's what these real Israelites are going through today. So-called black and Latinos dispersed throughout the world going through poverty. They're not funded by the U.S. like the state of Israel. Right. All right. All right. So, yeah, read that Revelation 3, 9 real quick. All right. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. Right, exactly. So, God said that those people, People who call themselves Jews are going to have to bow down before the real Jews, the real Israelites, all right? Because God loves the Israelites and hates Esau, hates exactly. the devil, all right? Right. Hates that, uh, uh, them Amalekites, them damn uh, Jewish people. Right. They're so, because, Jewish. Why, <clears throat> because Esau hated the Most High from the beginning. Yes. Yep. It was always meant to be the devil. Right. So here, here we are, are in these last days, and he's playing his role perfectly. 
we're the only ones who haven't gotten the the memo that we're supposed to play our role in serving God. Right, Israel. I mean, uh, Isaiah <laughs> chapter one verse three, bro. Oh, Israel does not know. Right. Yeah, let's get that. that uh, yeah. That's a good. One. All right, bam. Here we go. All right, the book of Isaiah, chapter 1, and verse 3. <clears throat> the ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel doeth not, not know, my people doeth not consider. Right, so even a dumb animal, the ox knows who his God is, who his master is. All right, right? and the ass knows where he's from. Where he belongs. But the Israelites don't know our real homeland. Right. You know, you speak to to uh, the southern kingdoms, so-called blacks here in America, they think their homeland is Africa. You speak right. to uh, uh, Latinos, they think their homeland is Mexico. Right. No. You have a homeland before you came to Mexico. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, read verse 4. All right. All right, verse 4. Ah, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away back. So we're the ones who hadn't got the memo. Right. That we're supposed to serve God and keep his commandments. We're a sinful nation. That's why the world is out of balance. It's out of course. The world is wicked Absolutely. because we are Absolutely. wicked. Right. right. All right. So, so uh, from there, give me Ezekiel 36. All right. All right. 36 and 5. Because it was prophesied thousands of years ago that those Jewish people was going to go take the land. People think that it was, uh, oh, that's God bringing them back. God didn't bring them back. They came on their own accord in waves and started stealing people's houses. Right. And killing them. And killing them. And exile. That's right. Uh, yeah, give me Ezekiel 36 and 5. All right. 36 and verse 5. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Idumea, which have appointed my, my land into their possession with the joy of all their heart, with despiteful minds to cast it out for a prey. So those Jewish people are Idumea. Idumea means Edom, Esau, the right. devil. Right. All right. That's who went and took the land. Yep. And they cast out the Israelites for a uh, possession. All right. right. And a prey. For a prey. Right. My bad. My bad. Uh, I'm looking at something else over here. This is a uh, <laughs> jump to Ezekiel 35 and, and start with verse 5. All right. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity and the time of their iniquity had an end. Right. So that's going into how. Uh, on on this side, and this is what we're about to see that what happened on this side parallels what happened on that side about stealing the land and killing the inhabitants. All right, right. that's what happened over here. And it was said when their iniquity had an end, uh, there was supposed to be a hard cutoff of uh slavery and captivity over here in America in 1863 right. at the Emancipation Proclamation. But Esau wanted to keep the slaves, right? So he started a whole civil war and then right. even after that was lost he uh did his apartheid state his american apartheid jim crow and had right. the kkk run around lynching people exactly that's my business yeah. say, but it took another hundred years 1964 lyndon b johnson signed that to where they say you're more, more than two-thirds of a man bro three-fifths not even Three two-thirds three three yeah 60 <laughs> percent it's not even 66 percent it's 60 percent that's what i'm saying yeah and of course that had a reason within itself that's why the most high says always refers to babylon the great in their witchcraft because freemasons founded it yes and he constantly refers to great you know the great city in that witchcraft and your witchcraft programming on tv bro everything they do they try to be you know doc pharmacia bro yeah their whole health system is based off witchcraft, which is those potions. That's right. 
That's right, man. Because they'll take something like uh, medicines are supposed to come from, from like the plants, but right. they'll put those plants and dilute them right. and mix it with their witchcraft. You know what I'm saying? Because like the the most basic medicines do come from plants. Like aspirin comes from a tree, and then right. they take that tree and then they dilute it with all these chemicals and synthetic, <laughs> and they give you this little pill. Right. And, and then they do that with like the opium as well. They do that with, uh, you know, all these different plants. Right. Bro, they use the, the plants, like the, what it's supposed to be used for, like the, what they would call a holistic doctor or the, you know, now they would say that's more witch-like yeah. for you to use holistic things. But uh, they, they'll take the plant like you're talking about, that's the base, which is the medicine. And then mm -hmm. add, add all this, the sedative, the preservatives, all of the uh, synthetics, yeah. all of that. and go The chemical the hooks. That gets you addicted. There you go, and then yeah. they, uh, you know, put them through them uh, pill presser. Yeah, uh, pill pressers. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, going back back to uh, the perpetual hatred, and Esau still um, brought the sword down upon us, even when our iniquity had an end. Right. All right. So jump down to verse ten. This is what they did. All right, verse ten. Because thou hast said, these two nations and these two countries shall be mine, and we will possess it, whereas the Lord was there. Right, because it says, these two nations, first of all, that's Judah and Israel. Right. All right? That's the two nations of people. But it also said, these two countries. These two countries, that's the Americas, or America, USA, and the state of Israel. These two countries. He said, we, we're, we're going to take it. As if the Lord was there. They say America was founded upon Christian principles. That's a right. lie. Right. It was founded on genocide and slavery. And witch That's what it was founded witchcraft. on. And witchcraft, like what, like what she was bringing up. Uh, and the same with the state of Israel. Founded upon lies and genocide. Exactly. That's what I was to say, bro. Yeah. That's why the whole process, dude, Albert Pike put it in his book, bro. He outlined it. The process of going through World War One and Two to get to where they can establish a state of Israel with Edomites. Yeah. Yes. Oh, exactly. Where it says, uh, "Whereas the Lord was there." Uh, that's that had they had to found it upon Judaism. Right. Exactly. Zionism. Right. Uh, there you go. Uh, on that uh, Christian. Yeah, keep, reading. keep reading on that. All right. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord God. I will even do according to thine anger and according to thine envy, which thou hast used out of thy hatred against them. And I will make myself known amongst them when I have judged thee. So God is going to judge America. He's going to judge the state of Israel. He's going to destroy it. He's going to do according to their own anger. They're going to get a recompense for all their evil doings. All right. And y'all talk about y'all love America and I stand with the state of Israel. You're going to be destroyed too. Right. I'm telling you straight up, I, I I can't spare anybody's feelings on this, man. This is this is ridiculous. Right. Absolutely ridiculous, bro. Okay, re keep reading on that. Keep reading. All right. <clears throat> all right. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord, and that I have heard all thy blasphemies which thou hast spoken against the mountains of Israel, saying they are laid desolate they are given us to consume See, they waited they waited until they saw that god was not dealing with us anymore and they said now it's time to strike exactly bro it talks about it in another part that i was reading uh uh yesterday uh, during mine and hannah's lesson where it was saying uh where you said N now they are in iniquity now is our time to strike you know mm -hmm. and took us that's right that's Right. Um, yeah, keep, uh, keep reading. Keep reading on that. All right. All right. Thus, with your mouth, ye have boasted against me and have multiplied your words against me. I have heard them. God said, I, I hear you, and you're going right. to be judged according to your words and your actions. Every idle word and every action, obviously. That's right. That's right. They're going to be judged tremendously right. for all the evil that they're doing. Look, watch this next one. Yeah. Read. Thus saith the Lord God, 
when the whole earth rejoices, I will make thee desolate. So what's, what is the event that makes the whole earth rejoice? What are you talking about? Christ coming back? You no, know I'm saying like him making them desolate. Yeah. Yeah. The earth will be refreshed. Right. Exactly. Because right now, the earth is in wickedness. The earth is in, not only is it in wickedness, but the people are suffering. Right. Because you know I like to pull that one in Proverbs where uh, it says how when the when the righteous ruleth, the people rejoice. Exactly. Uh, where is that at? Uh, Proverbs. Yeah, I'm looking for it. I thought it was like maybe Proverbs 16. No, don't get me lying. Uh, I would have said what? Wisdom of Solomon, honestly. It, it's in uh, it's in Proverbs. Uh, I know that much. <clears throat> no, it's de it's definitely in Proverbs, not Proverbs sixteen. Maybe Proverbs eleven. Let me find it. Let me find it. Mm. Uh, oh man, I'm gonna have to look it up. Oh, uh, hang on. I'm I'm right here at ten. Do you see it? Uh, anywhere? No, I was looking at eleven. I ain't, I didn't see it there. <laughs> it might even be in the twenties somewhere. <laughs> I'm still uh when it comes to the oh uh the Proverbs precept. Since there's so many in each chapter, so many good ones in each chapter, I, 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 I find them hard to find. All right. I got I to gotta look it up now. <laughs> that's a, that's a, a good one where, where it said that the, uh, the thought is, and the reason why we're going to it, it said when the people rejoice, that's when it's going to be made desolate. Uh, let's see. Where is that? Uh, twenty-nine and two. 20. I didn't even turn over to twenty-nine. I was at twenty-eight, and I was looking around. Well, I was going. And two. So I would have never, never found it. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Twenty-nine and two. Yep. Yeah. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. And see, that's what's happening today. The wicked are bearing rule, and the people are mourning. There's so many up uproars and seditions throughout the earth. Everybody's talking about how capitalism has destroyed the earth. And yeah, but it's wickedness in general that's destroying the earth. Because these people talk about capitalism as the problem or trying to bring their own form of wickedness. That ain't going to save you. All right? But what's going to save you is righteousness. In Jesus Christ. That's what's going to save you. All right. Exactly. So, we've been talking about, uh, I mentioned the star so much that I need to bring that out about how that is not biblical. All right. Give me that in hey, Amos bro. 5. Uh, I'm fixing to, I have to go check on them, bro. So, Shalom, Most High Christ bless. Uh, Sabbath, bro. I'll talk to you later on. All right. Shalom, bro. Most High Christ bless. I'm probably going to go for another like half hour or so. All right, man. I'm, I'm Catch you on here, bro. All right. Chill on, bro. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. All right. I was about to finish the stream. I wasn't even thinking. <laughs> but anyway, Amos. The book of Amos, chapter 5. Oh, oh yeah. 5 and 26. Here it says. Um, because this is actually rebuke rebuking the people of Israel for their wickedness. But what the Jewish people did is they adopted the Talmud, which was written by wicked Israelites who tried to in, in, infuse witchcraft and tradition into the scriptures. All right? And the J Jewish people just took that and, and run with it. And notice I'm, I'm, I'm emphasizing the ish. Because if you say I'm going to meet you at noon-ish, it's kind of around noon, might be around 1230, it might be 1145. You know, it's not, not exactly noon. So when they say they're Jewish, they're saying, well, we kind of like the Jews. They're saying they're not really, 
Israeli to Jews when they say that, all right? When they say they're Israelis, that means they're from the land of Israel. They're not Israelites. They're not descended of Israel, all right? But anyway, Amos 5, so I'm, uh, I'm going to read verse 26. It says, but ye have borne the tabernacle of your Moloch and tune your images, the star of your God, which ye made to yourselves. All right, God, God didn't give that star. It's not David's star. David served the Lord. He didn't have that star. It's not the shield of David, as some people like to say. All right. First of all, it's not a shield at all. But secondly, David's shield was the Lord. Not this image of a star. And what it says star here? The, the, the stars, it's, it says one star specifically because they use that one star, the six point. But all those stars, pentagram, that's witchcraft. The six point star, that's witchcraft. Seven point star, that's witchcraft. That's what the sheriffs wear. That's witchcraft. Eight point stars, you name it. It's just different levels of demons, different levels of witchcraft. That's all it is. All right. So you have the uh the star on the Israeli flag, which as it said, it says the star of your God, which you made to yourselves. And then on the American flag, you got 50 pentagrams. All right. Just because they turn it a different way, y'all, y'all foolish. Y'all believe there's something different because it's turned a different way. That's still a pentagram. Same thing, same thing, all right? It's all witchcraft, it's all foolishness, idolatry. That's what it is, all right? And y'all supporting these people. Put it up on your page talking about stand for people, we pray for peace. Christ didn't come to send peace, he come to send a, send a sword. <laughs> anyway, anyway, so what's this all leading to? Why? Why is this conflict happening? And we've touched on this, but we'll touch on it again. Joel 3, starting with verse 1, all right? For behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, meaning bring the people out of captivity, that's what that means, bring again to the, to the land. I will also gather all nations and bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel. That's the 12 tribes. All right. Jewish people ain't talking about 12 tribes. They say, oh, we Jewish. That's the only tribe. Arthur Kosler, a Jewish man who did his research on his own heritage, said, we must come from a 13th tribe because we are not the 12 tribes of Israel. That's what he said in his book, The 13th Tribe. He said, we descendants of, uh, of the uh, Khazars who converted to Judaism in the Middle Ages. This was a well-known and well-established fact in the late 1800s and the early 1900s. Jewish people wrote about it in their encyclopedias and everything. All right? It was only in 1948 when they did, all the, did away with all that stuff and said, we have a right to the land because they wanted to steal the land. Israel and Britain, I mean, uh, America and Britain wanted a, a ally in the Middle East they could trust. <laughs> so they established that uh, state and stole that country, all right? <clears throat> and plead for my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations. That, that's where the Israelites are now. They're not in the land, they're scattered among the nations. There's a remnant there, sure. And you have like the demonic Israelites that move back, but the, the Israelites are scattered among the nations, scattered through slave ships, scattered through forced migration, all right? And parted my land. That's what they have done. They parted Jerusalem right down the middle and split it between the Israelis and the Palestinians. And they, they cut they cut the land along the Jordan River and said, okay, the state of Israel is on this side, the state of Jordan's over here, the state of Lebanon's up here, the Saudi Arabia gets a little chunk down here. They parted the land. <clears throat> so God is going to gather all nations down to the Valley of Jehoshaphat. That's the Valley of Megiddo, a.k.a. Armageddon. That's what that is. Armageddon is not a word that means like a, a meteor striking the earth. Armageddon means the Valley of Megiddo. 
all right? That's in the state of Israel today. <clears throat> and they have cast lots for my people, right? They put people on auction blocks and sold them. And had given a boy for a harlot and sold a girl for wine that they might drink, right? They made the boys breeders in slavery. And this is specifically talking about Judah and Jerusalem, right? This happened somewhat amongst the northern kingdom, but it's talking about Judah, right? So-called blacks, uh, Jamaicans, Haitians, you know? Uh, and so the girl for wine they might drink, right? They uh, they uh, are worded to women. Yay. And what have you to do with me, O Tyre and Zidane? So those are African nations. And all, all the coast of Palestine, that's the Arabs, right? The Palestinians. Will you render me a recompense? And if you recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head? So understand, God said he will judge the Africans and the Arabs. Because that is set up here, they scattered. God's people, they scattered the heritage of Israel. Uh, they scattered God's heritage, Israel, the Israelites, the 12 tribes. <laughs> because ye have taken my silver and my gold and have carried into your temples my goodly and pleasant things. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem, right? So that's the uh, southern kingdom and a remnant of the northern kingdom, have ye sold unto the Grecians that ye might remove them far from their borders. So that's where the Israelites are. God told you where they were, scattered among the nations, Africans and Arabs sold the Israelites to white people. Grecians are Europeans. So God just laid out this whole situation. He said, look, here's what happened to my people. The heathen have come in and stolen the land. So I'm going to gather everybody together to World War III. That's what he's saying right here. All right. Christ said the same thing, the same exact thing. And Luke 21, Luke 21, uh, uh, yes, 21, I'm going to start with verse 19, and when he, and when he, uh, no, verse 19, excuse me, that's verse 20, verse 19, in your patience possess ye your souls, so watch and pray and endure, be patient to see how the Lord, Lord will make himself manifest in these last days. See how the Lord will uh, return in these last days. Be patient. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. So this is talking about right after Christ's day, right? In the days of the apostles. This is talking about when Rome come to take Jerusalem. <laughs> Excuse me. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. All right. All right. So this is talking about uh, the southern kingdom and a remnant of the northern kingdom that was still over there because at this point in Christ's day, most of the northern kingdom had come over here to the west. All right. In ships, they called this land Arsereth. Uh, and at that time, they were trying to keep the commandments. All right. And let them which are in the midst of it depart out. He's saying, leave Jerusalem, leave Judea. Rome is going to take it. Leave. Flee to the mountains, meaning flee into the nearest mountains were Mount Sinai and the mountains in Egypt, which is in Africa. He's saying, go to Africa, leave Judea, and run into Africa. All right? Before that Suez Canal was built, you could walk from Israel into Egypt. All right? He said, run into Africa, depart out, and let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. He said, don't come back for the feast as you would normally do. Don't come back to Jerusalem for the feast. All right? And let others know, don't go to Jerusalem when Rome takes it. All right? But woe unto them that are with child. No, excuse me. Verse 22. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. He's talking about Deuteronomy 28. All right, uh, among others, about Israel going into captivity to uh, to bring about these last days that we live in. All right, he's saying, look, y'all got to flee to Africa to fulfill prophecy. All right, but woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days, for there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. Right, so running and carrying a baby is hard. That's what he's saying here. Y'all gonna have to run out of Jerusalem, it's going to be hard to the women who are nursing children. All right? Verse 24. 
and they shall fall by the edge of the sword, right? The people who tried to stay and defend Jerusalem, they died. This is 70 AD. This is documented history. This is, this is undisputable, all right? And shall be led away captive into all nations, right? That's the prophecy that had to be fulfilled. That's Deuteronomy 28, 64. 68 is the mode of transportation of ships, all right? And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles, meaning the other nations, until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. And that's what Joel was prophesying, the times of the Gentiles being fulfilled, all right? When God brings them down to the Valley of Jehoshaphat for World War III. That's what it's talking about, all right? So, I keep mentioning the... Uh, the Valley of Megiddo, Armageddon, all right? That's prophesied as well. That's where we get the word from. Let's find it real quick here in Revelation. Mm, yes. Um, okay, Revelation 16 is a little deep, but I'm gonna try to explain it to you uh, as simply as I can. Revelation 16, starting with verse 12. Now, in, in Revelation, it tells the same thing over and over again about how history unfolds, whether it be the seals, the vows, the trumps. It's the uh, same thing, right? There's, there's seven of them, as it's described in Revelation. The seventh is always Christ returning. The sixth is always culminating up until World War III, all right? The specific timelines, we're not going to get into it right now because it's kind of deep, but uh, starting with verse 12, it says, and the sixth sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up. All right? That's what's happened. You look up the Euphrates, and you'll see that it's dried up. And you see that the world is uh, what they call climate change. The world is going through droughts and famines. The Euphrates River has dried up. That's prophecy. That the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. So the east you, you know the Eastern Hemisphere, but <clears throat> the kings of the East is everything from like Iran to Japan, right? That's all that's the East. And I saw three unclean spirits, like frogs came out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet, right? That's the propaganda that's going out through the media, all right? For they, they are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty, all right? So they uh, work in the miracles that what they call a miracle of modern science, right? If, they, if somebody's dead and a doctor bring them back, they'll say it's a miracle of modern science, right? Uh, verse 15, behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked, and they see his shame, right? So there's another scripture talking about the white garments, the purified garments, but also you can take that literally, all right? Christ is coming back to kill those in strange apparel. You see the dudes cross-dressing these days. You see the women wearing pants. The world is backwards. The world is so backwards that uh, y'all think women wearing pants is normal. That's not normal. That's new in the earth. That came around in the past hundred years, all right? <clears throat> Verse 16. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. That's the Valley of Megiddo. All right? So that's where you get that from. The, the word Armageddon means Valley of Megiddo. All right? So from there, let's talk a little bit more about this war, about this war that's coming. World War Three. All right? Isaiah 9 and verse 6. Oh, I'll start with 5. I'll start with 5. Isaiah 9 and verse 5. Isaiah was uh, 600, 700 years before Christ. So uh, he, he, was, uh, he was prophesying about a lot. Verse uh, 5. Isaiah 9 and 5. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood. So if you go back to the old days, right, where they just had, like, uh, swords, 
and uh, spears and things like that, shields out there. The, the, the warriors would roll into battle with their battle cries and, uh, and, and just clanking of weapons, confused noise, and garments rolled in blood because they would stab people, shoot people with arrows, people bleeding, right? Uh, and even on up to like modern wars, like even World War One, World War Two, they'd still run out there uh, with the guns, shooting pow, 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 right? Confused noise, and people get shot, garments rolled in blood, right? Uh, yeah, garments rolled in blood. But this, meaning this war, this World War Three, shall be with burning and fuel of fire. It's going to be a nuclear war. That's what World War Three is going to be. All right. Sure, there's going to be troops on the ground, but the significant thing about this war, there's always been troops on the ground. The significant thing about this war is it's going to be a nuclear war, all right? Uh, uh, I do want to read 6 and 7, though. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. So. On the back end of this World War III, Christ is going to establish his government, his kingdom, all right? He's going to see the world in disarray, and he's going to come and strike at the appropriate time, whenever the Father tells him to, all right? And no man knows that day or that hour but the Lord, all right? That is the Father, all right? Verse 7, of the the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. And this kingdom ain't going to end. It's going to be an everlasting dominion, as Daniel 7 says. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice. All right, that's what he's going to do. He's going to come with a sword to establish judgment and justice in the earth. From henceforth, even forever the zeal of the lord of hosts will perform this you see that right there so god's going to make sure that it happens let's talk a little bit more about these uh about the the fuel of fire and the burning all right let me read this where am i going isaiah still in isaiah 54 and verse 16 isaiah 54 and verse 16 Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth coals in the fire and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work, and I have created the waster to destroy. All right, so again, Isaiah is using the same type of imagery uh, as we've seen in Isaiah 9, where he said, uh, initially, all the, all, all the other wars have been confused noise, garments rolled in blood. He said, I've created the smith that bloweth the coals and the fire. And bringing forth an instrument for his work. So that's that's talking about like a blacksmith who would bring forth weapons, right? Bring forth metal weapons. Blacksmith knows how to work in weapons, bring swords and axes and spears, things like that. All right. But God, God said, I have created the waster to destroy. When you see the word waste in the scriptures, they ain't talking about like food goes bad. It's talking about like wasting a city, destroying a, a whole city. We have weapons today that do that. They're called nukes, all right? And these ain't like the Hiroshima and Nagasaki nukes. Uh, these cities will not be restored, all right? The cities that be destroyed with these nukes, especially on this side, are going to just burn, just burn forever. They're going to be uninhabitable afterwards, all right? Uh, and verse 17, people love this scripture. Verse 17 comes right after it. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. He said it right there. So God said, look, my anointed, the nukes ain't going to affect them. God said, I made the nukes. I decide who it kills. And in that day of judgment, only the wicked will be destroyed with the nukes. The righteous are going to see the nukes drop, see the explosions happen, and just walk through it. And nothing will, will hurt them. All right? And every Every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment shalt thou condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, said the Lord. All right? So let's get a little bit more on that as far as no weapon that's formed against thee shall prosper. The nukes are not going to affect the righteous. All right? This is Psalms 91. Because this is prophesied throughout the whole Bible. All right? 
this is a great and terrible day of judgment that the word again it, it talks about through the whole bible because this is the, the most important time to be alive you can make the, the argument that you know when christ walked the earth in, in his uh in his uh earthly form that that was probably that's up there but these last days we get to see him in his godly form in his heavenly form when he returns all right this is psalm 91 um starting with verse four he, he shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust his truth shall be thy shield and buckler all right so it said god will protect you that's essentially what it's saying right there thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night nor for the arrow that flyeth by day and see this ain't talking about a, a normal arrow this is talking about missiles all right he said the right the righteous ain't gonna be worried about that stuff all right because the righteous know god will protect them verse six nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday here we see that word wasteth again the waster that god made to destroy cities it said that in some places it's going to be noonday in some places it's going to be at nighttime because that's how the world works when christ returns it's going to be a global event so for some people it's going to be in the middle of the night for some people it's going to be in the middle of the day all right a thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand but it shall not come nigh thee. It will not come near you. You'll be walking through the flames, walking through the, the destruction. You say, man, I know that place. It's all burnt up. Didn't that used to be? Yeah, gone. All right. That's no weapon formed against thee shall prosper. People like it because it sounds nice. But it's talking about nuclear weapons. God made nuclear weapons, and he's only going to kill those who deserve it, who are the wicked, who have not been keeping God's commandments. And that's most people on the earth going to die in that day. Why do you think it's 8 billion people? Because God uh, has established that the slain of the Lord shall be many, and only a remnant will be saved. Many are called, but few are chosen. All right? Verse 8. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. We're going to see it with our eyes. We're going to see it happening, but it will not come nigh us. All right? Lord's will, I get to be, you know, <laughs> whether it be delivered or resurrected in that day. Verse 9, because thou hast made the lord which is thy refuge which is my refuge even the most high thy habitation because you trust in god god will deliver you in that day all right these hold on excuse me there shall no evil befall thee neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling it said plague specifically that's why i wanted to read to that verse because it said plague specifically so let's read the plague it's talking about all right zechariah describes it in detail and zechariah is a prophet that a lot of people sleep on his writings i know whenever i was reading them here here recently i was like man this thing this thing go hard some of it went right over my head and i was like man i need to i need to study but um excuse me zechariah 14 and verse 12 and this shall be the plague wherewith the lord will smite all the people that have fallen against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. So you ain't even had time to hit the ground yet, but your flesh is already gone. What can do that? A nuke can do that. You ever seen a, a Terminator 2 Judgment Day where you got the woman standing or, or, or holding on to the fence, then that nuke drops and the bones still on the fence. The bones ain't even hit the ground yet, but the flesh is gone. All right, same thing right here. And their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. All their the flesh, the meat 
that makes their uh, squishy parts that make up their organs are all blown up. They're all gone. They're all disintegrated. All right. So from there, there's a couple more things that I want to touch on. Same, same topic. All right. The, this all, all this is leading to World War Three. That's what it's leading to. Whether they settle the conflicts they got going on now and you know delay the inevitable, that's possible. But it's all escalating. It's all escalating to bring everybody down there. Uh, America's already sent ships over there to Israel. Sent warships. Sent the, the biggest warship ever built. They sent that to Israel. All right, or in the Mediterranean. You know, let uh, Hamas know in Gaza. Hey, don't do nothing. Don't do nothing funny. Because we're going to mess y'all up, too. Y'all thought that the state of Israel messed y'all up. No. America really shut you down. All right? It's all escalating to World War Three. All right? Um, but World War Three is leading to the kingdom, as we read in uh, Isaiah 9. So I do want to touch on this real quick, Isaiah 60. Because we read this at the first uh, in Revelation 3 and 9, when God said, I'm going to make those fake Jews who are liars and the synagogue of Satan, I'm going to make them bow down before the uh, the real Israelites, the real 12 tribes. All right. Isaiah 60. Uh, and verse 10. <laughs> this is, uh, I'm kind of debating what, if I want to get something else first, but uh, no, which is, which is, uh, We'll just read this. Isaiah 16, verse 10. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, and their king shall minister unto thee. What does that minister mean? Serve. So the other nations who have always oppressed the Israelites are going to have to serve the Israelites in the kingdom to be the servants and the handmaids, as Isaiah 14 said. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor have I had mercy on thee. Right? So God, in the last days, Christ will gather his 12 tribes together and choose his people to establish his government, all right? And you read about that in Revelation 7. Therefore, thy gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day nor night, that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles and that their kings may be brought, right? Their army, their kings, it doesn't matter. They're being brought to the Israelites. <coughs> so they may serve God's people. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. So whoever does not want to serve God's people will die. That's the kingdom. It's God's kingdom being established on the earth. And it's going to take a lot of bloodshed. It is. That's what World War III is about, all that bloodshed, then in the herd. And then in the kingdom, if you don't serve Christ, you will perish. All right? The grace and the mercy is over. It's time for judgment and justice. All right? Verse 13. The glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee, the fir tree, the pine tree, the box together, to beautify the place of my sanctuary. And I will make the place of my feet glorious. Right? Because the earth is the Lord's footstool. It's not glorious right now. It's hideous. It's wicked. It's disgusting. God said he's going to make it glorious and the way that he's going to do that is he's going to get the resources from the other nations from all over the world they're going to bring those resources to jerusalem and the kingdom will be built new jerusalem all right verse 14 the sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee and all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet that's what revelation 3 and 9 says those who say they are jews and are not will bow down to thee, all right? Saying the same things right here. The sons of them that afflicted thee is going to bow down. And they shall call thee the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel, all right? And they will, they will have to proclaim, oh, yeah, y'all the real Israelites. We're not the Israelites. We, we're, not, we're not the Jews. They're going to have to proclaim that before everyone, all right? These days, they can try to hide it. They can try to deny it. They can try to lie about it. But in the kingdom, you ain't, you ain't lying to God. Your, arm, your arms are too short to box with God. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you got all these weapons now. 
no weapon formed against God's chosen will prosper. All right. All right. So from there, I want to read this in Second Peter, just because I feel like it wraps it up pretty nicely. Second Peter three, verse twenty two. Um, I don't, uh, uh, I kind of want to read all, all of it, not the whole chapter, but starting with verse three, the whole context. Second Peter three, start with verse three, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last day scoffers, whacking, walking, walking after their own lust, walking after their own lust, whatever they want to do. That's what people do today. They do whatever they want to do. They don't do what God wants them to do. And saying, where is the promise of his coming? That's what people will say. Christ's been dead for 2,000 years. When are he going to come back? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. That's what people will say. They'll be like, well, every, every generation thinks that theirs is the last generation. Everything, every generation thinks that theirs is the last days. Yeah, because the scripture has been talking about it for a long time, for 2,000 years. All right? But now we see the prophecy coming to pass all right for this they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of god the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished right so peter is comparing as christ did he's comparing the world that we live in now to the days of noah to the flood he said look the old the world destroyed was destroyed with water, all right? But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men, all right? So, so he said this world that we live in now is going to be judged by fire, all right? But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. So God will wait however long it takes for his people to wake up, all right? He needs 144,000, 12,000 12, of each tribe, all right? That's what he needs for his army. That's what Revelation 7 says, starting with Judah, going all the way down through all the 12, all right? The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slack. So God has not forgot, all right? He will deliver on everything that he said. All the prophecies will come to pass. Not one of these shall fail. But his long suffering to usward, the reason why Christ has not come back yet is because he's so merciful, because he's so patient with us. All right? Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to uh, repentance. All right? So God doesn't want, want any of his elect to perish. That's why he's. He's patiently waiting on us to get right. And I say us because I need to get right too. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise. So that great noise, that new kitten, then boom. That's what that great noise is. Boom. Elements. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. So that periodic table of elements that Esau has has. Uh, invented to, to describe the world that we live in, those elements all the way down to the atomic particles are going to melt. They're going to be liquefied, disintegrated. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. So everything over here in America, specifically this Babylon the Great, is going to be destroyed, turned into a lake of fire, as the scriptures say. All right? Verse 11. This is what I wanted to get to. This is why I wanted to come here. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? So, seeing then that this is the prophecy and this is what's going to happen, who are we going to be? Who are you going to be? Are you going to repent? Are you are you? Are you going to stand with the state of Israel in America and fall and uh, sink with the ship? Are you going to sink with the ship? Or are you going to be getting a lifeboat? That's what it's, that's what it's going to come down to. 
You have to work out your own salvation. Can't nobody else make that decision for you. You have to get right in the eyes of God. Not in my eyes. I don't care what you do. But God, God sees all things. All right? All right? Uh, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. So who are you to be? Knowing that, that the day of God is coming, the day of the Lord is coming, who are you going to be in all, all holy conversation and godliness? Are you going to be in a holy conversation and spoke it of in a, in a righteous sense, saying, that's a good brother, or, or, or that's a good sister? They're, they're, uh, they keep the commandments of God and have faith in Jesus. Or are you going to be, well, I hate it for them. <sighs> they're going to be judged. They're wicked as hell. Who are you going to be? 